In Flanders fields the poppies blow between the crosses, row on row. That mark our place and in the sky the lark still bravely singing fly, scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead. Short days ago we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved. And now we lie in Flanders fields. To you from failing hands we throw the torch, be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders fields. Leaving Dover. Kelly Bound. In February 1916, the Germans started a battle in Verdun, and so the French troops were massively sent to Verdun to fight over there. And from then on, the French asked their allies, the British, to take over in Arras. And that's why from February, March 1916, British troops defend Arras and no longer the French. In the First World War, the British army was a small professional army. So these soldiers were well equipped, they had experience, but they were few in number. Only 400,000 soldiers were part of the British army. It's a small number if you compare it with the 3.6 million French soldiers and the 3.8 million German soldiers. Lord Kitchener, the British Secretary of State for War, launched an appeal and the whole British Empire responded. So 2.6 million volunteers enlisted in this new army. And these volunteers came from Great Britain, Ireland, Canada, Newfoundland, South Africa, India, Australia and New Zealand. 20, 30 ploys such as this one under the citizens of Arras. They will dig tunnels to try and go under the German trench. The gates were very large. Some of them were 70 or 50 or 60 feet wide, but two ways in New Zealand. In January 1917, the New Zealand tunnels, they were working round the clock, so in fact it was an eight hour shift for each team. One who fixed the rubble and one who removed the rubble. Once a team had finished working its eight hours, a new team started also working eight hours and so on. There were always miners digging day and night so that everything could be ready at time. <laughs> So I'm stopping here because I want you to have a look at what's written on the wall in the back. So I just wanted you to notice that everything written in black uh, on the stone was written in English and was written during the First World War by the New Zealand tunnels. So on the pillars you can read numbers. So here you can read a number. And on the last pillar, so these numbers were written by New Zealand tunnels during the First World War in order to find their way in this whole 
uh, network of ports. And they also gave names of cities from New Zealand to the different points they found in the Wolfie area where we are now. Now, the British must find the best location for their diversion. They select, harass, and underground quarries. The objective is to use the network as a Trojan horse against the German forces. So, the British and the French high commands met in the city of Chantilly on the 16th of November 1960 to try and find a strategy to break uh, the front line. So during the Chantilly conference, they planned two offensives, a main offensive here at Le Chemin for the 16th of April 1917, and needed by the French troops. And they decided that this main offensive will be preceded eight days before by a diversionary attack in Arras, planned for the 9th of April 1917, and needed by the British troops. What is the goal of this diversionary attack? This offensive will happen on the 16th of April 1917, and eight days before, there will be a diversionary attack here in Arras on the 9th of April. So these two points, Arras and Le Chemin des Dames, were carefully chosen. How is the front line between these two points? Is it straight? No. no. Yeah. It's curved. It needs many German troops here to be defended, many more than if the front line was straighter. So the French and the British, they know that here there are many uh, German troops in quite a difficult position. So this goes from Wellington Tunnel to Auckland Tunnel, built around 1916. G.C. Stubbs gave his orders 24 hours before the launch of the battle. He told his men that the goal was to reach the Black Line, which was the name of the first German trench line. And his men were going to be the first wave of assault, so the issue was really important. My beloved wife, when you receive this letter, I pray to God I will have left this dreadful place, and that I will have survived in the next few days. If I am wounded, I will let you know as quickly as possible. If my time has come, I will leave you and our dear children in the able hands of God. So this is Vimy Ridge, a Canadian memorial and what the things you can see in front of us is where all the little craters are from where all the shells and mortars dropped. We're going to head over towards the memorial now. So this is the memorial for Canada for Vimy Ridge. It took 11 years to build and it's for the fallen of the First World War. Wait, so was this like... 
top of the ridge, so it was a high point. So obviously it was a real advantage. Whoever was up here had a real advantage of spread. So. At the going down of the sun, lest we forget. So this is just down from the ridge itself, but it was an old trench line. This is a reconstruction, the actual sandbags now made of concrete. firing step there and this step here would lean your elbows on and uh, lean forward and obviously you want to stick your head over the top because you're going to get shot off so a good old look like a power scope type thing so as I say we've got a crater line here so this is one single crater, which stretches probably about 40 meters wide. So the ones we're in at the moment are the Germans, which are a lot lower. Unfortunately, the tunnels are closed. The size of this crater was due to an underground mine. And quite a few of them were blown up in this area. Smaller ones are artillery and mortar shells. Now looking over to my left hand side, we've got a memorial over there. The cemetery you can see just in the distance. Like gravestones, which are Canadian Cemetery. See a German cemetery, isn't it?
He's got myxomatosis. It's an eye infection that actually will basically kill him. Also, it's contagious. So for most conspicuous bravery, when a scout to a patrol, he worked his way towards the enemy line with the greatest gallantry and determination, in spite of continuous fire from both our snipers and close range. These snipers he stalked and killed. Later, his patrol was similarly held up, and again he disposed of the snipers. Private Barrett, accurate shooting caused many casualties to the enemy, and prevented their advance. Throughout the enterprise, he was under heavy machine gun and rifle fire. There were some amateur archaeologists who knew that some trenches had with all the artifacts that the diggers have found over there. We still have a little piece of original rebuilt trenches. You can say it's quite like a scaffolding. It's like a fence around it. And you here, if it's blue on top, that means you are on the Allied side. If it's red, it means you are on the German side. Sometimes uh, they are just like a couple of meters away from each other. So just to know and to realize how close that troops could be to each other. Who was where the German side was? Ah, you see one here, left. So here we see, ah, you see, look left, you see the red on top? So, German side. And so we have mentioned and the Allied troops were on the other side and again German here. So that's how you can follow those front lines and know where they were positioned at the time. Yeah, so that's the inside of the trench. These were the Yorkshire trenches. Yeah, so that's the trenches. The water from all the flooding that I've recently. Mm -hmm. Now this metal plate here is where you used to have a quick look at about getting your head shot off. Oh, uh, it's big enough to shove a rifle into as well. So you can see the duck boards with the A-frame. Now, on your right hand side, you will see a Welsh flag. Uh, under that Welsh flag, you will find the Welsh dragon. It's uh, erected over there because the wall of the tavern just beyond it, there's a poem. It's called Riffle, and it's uh, a poem by and Hedwin, was a Welsh poet who also fought for uh, Great Britain. Riffle means rumble, trouble, chaos, war. Another Welsh flag, and underneath that Welsh flag, find that. Poem, on your right hand side is another British military 
cemetery. Few open military cemeteries and open military cemeteries meant that graves could be added on these cemeteries. A lot of new graves here as well. The difference is that our Commonwealth War Graves Commission is subsidized, the Germans are not. So when we enter this building, what you have to look at is, first you look at the ceiling. And one of the things you will see is that the five crosses again, so on top of the ceiling. This is the map of Belgium, okay? So this is the map. You see, this is Ypres, okay? And Langemark is just above it. You see? So that's one. Then we have where you see that cross. That's number two. Uh, number three is here. And then on top, Platzmo, that's number four. So that's all that's left in the area. Uh, this is not the biggest one, so there's still one that's bigger than uh, this one here. The smallest one is in the, in the near to the spirit. That was also where there used to be a medical post from the Germans. The numbers at the top and bottom are whereabouts they are in the cemetery. And it says the unknown soldiers. And then there's actually another three soldiers underneath. Here we have uh, St. Julian uh, Langemark and St. Julian is the second most important place for the Canadians to have fought. are different, all the backpacks are different and you can easily tell from what side, what country they are from. This is a Scottish monument and the, on the other side of that Scottish monument you have a plaque from which such a soldier has been cut. This monument has been uh, erected on the initiative that one of the inhabitants of Zonnebeke, the village that lies just behind us. On this cemetery, from whatever point of view you take, all very nicely aligned. This is very contradictory to the French soldiers themselves during the First World War. When you are in the middle here, you have a gangway towards the obelisk, uh, or that passage left and right of the corridor are buried the officers. Next to the officers are buried the non-commissioned officers, so the, the lower ones in military rank, and then next to the gun are buried simple soldiers, the privates. Um, as you can see, they are practically all crosses, 
but 60 of them have a mosque form headstone and this mosque form is for the Tunisians, the Algerians and the Americans who fought for France and that have died here. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the daily act of remembrance. May we please ask to remain silent and not to vote either during or after the ceremony. Thank you. Dames and heren, welcome to this dagelijks herdenkingsplechtheid. Mogen jullie verzoeken de stilte te bewaren en niet te publiceren gedurende en na the back of the Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
When you go home, tell them of us and say, for your tomorrow, we gave our today.
Take me back to dear old Blighty Put me on the train to London town Take me over there Drop me anywhere A little 